Hello, and welcome to Footnotes. I'm here to recap the most ravishing ideas from around Wired. First up today, the only symbol more sinister and confusing than princes. Wired Enterprise explored the theory that the UPC is in fact the mark of the beast, which would mean the beast shops at grocery stores instead of farmer's markets, perhaps because he sunburns easily. Among the many problems with this theory is the fact that the mark should only show up on people to designate them as followers of the beast. If the mark is a UPC, then only the guy from the Hitman video games and Captain Crunch are followers, which would be nice if you wanted to cut up the roofs of your enemies' mouths. So what is this beast? The Bible describes it as a sort of leopard slash lion, having seven heads and a bear's feet, shown here with a mysterious opposable thumb for handing sticks to dragons. The number associated with the beast is of course 666. We now more closely associate 666 with the devil or the Antichrist, who was probably born on June 6, 2006 and is likely currently in kindergarten tormenting his teacher, who may or may not be Arnold Schwarzenegger, sent from the future to stop him. It might be a tumor. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. There's even a word for the fear of the number 666. No joke. It's hexacosioe hexaconta hexaphobia, and the fear of pronouncing that word is hexacosioe hexaconta hexaphobia phobia, and the fear of pronouncing the fear of pronouncing hexacosioe hexaconta hexaphobia phobia is hexacosioe hexaconta hexaphobia phobia phobia, and I'll stop now. Up next, unicorns, mythical rainbow riding creatures feared by no one except rhinos who would lose in a face fight with them. This came up in a wire design story on superheroes one of which is a half-man, half-unicorn, but for some reason isn't called the Clunicorn. It was the ancient Greeks who first described the unicorns, and they're even mentioned several times in the Bible. That means that they must have been on Noah's Ark, which explains the rainbow, because if you really think that two of every animal can somehow fit on a boat, it's not a stretch to attribute optical phenomena to unicorns. In medieval folklore, it was said that unicorns could only be captured by female virgins, this explains why they run so freely at the Jersey Shore. The earnest belief in unicorns continued on into the Renaissance, which saw the birth of the Cabinet of Curiosities, a private collection of wonders often gathered during travels. The supposed unicorn horn was a popular item in these collections. Educated visitors might point out that they were in fact narwhal horns, but I personally wouldn't want to argue with a man who hangs bears from the damn ceiling. It's theorized that other horned animals like bulls could have been mistaken for unicorns by people who only glimpsed their profile. Remember that not many folks went to college back then. They could have even been afraid of school, a disorder called scolionophobia, and the fear of pronouncing the word scolionophobia is called scol- It's called scolophoniobiophobia. We are pronouncing scolophonio. Pronouncing scolophoniobia is called scolophoniobiophobia. Disorder called scolophoniobia. Called scolophonioni. Disorder <laughs> called scolophonioni. Scolophonioni. Why can't I get it right? <laughs>